almost fell. Jeez. Yeah, ankles are weak. I almost tripped again. Oh, this is a bad omen for this this little walk in the woods. A real bad omen. Use it at your own risk. Fall colors have really picked up this week. I'm sure they've been in full swing in the mountains for most of this month, but it's finally reached down to my elevation. It's really gorgeous. And at the same time, we're having a strange resurgence of warm weather. Highs are in the 80s. Past, well, yesterday, today, tomorrow, the next day. Really odd. And then Tuesday, it's going to dip way back down to where it should be for what will be November. I'm kind of enjoying it. Like the last couple of warm days we'll probably have all year. While also enjoying beautiful fall colors. And these dogs, of course. Dry creek bed, bone dry, will be bone dry until early spring, maybe February, late February, March, when things start melting.
Well, and they both want to pee on the same thing. <laughs> At the same time. I just wonder what this clearing was for. There is four. I wonder if there's another trail that comes from the highway. Starts there. I'm going to describe a bit of uh, tension that I've personally been experiencing in making these videos. They started, and in a lot of ways, they mostly still are, just me recording my dogs while we're out hiking, because I love being out here with my dogs. That started with Leo. I like to be in nature. I don't want to see it. And then... Um, you know, I guess time moved on and mom got a smart TV or I don't know, the Chromecast or a, the Amazon version of it, whatever. And then grandma did, whole family had one. And like, I've been living away from home for a while. Everybody knows I do these hikes and whatnot, outdoorsy stuff with the dogs. I, I, well, but back then I think it was just Leo. Maybe Baby Dash, I don't remember. Um, I was like, hey, you could all see what I'm doing. You could all see what I've seen. You could all see what the dogs are like when they're off leash and kind of in a more in their own element. Yeah. I think that's maybe how it started. It's like, this is what Leo does when she's not in a, in a built environment. This is how she is, and this is how it is with her, and it's great. You know, she's a great trail partner. And it's really great being out here in nature. So now I had this that I could watch back and I could share it with my family. Um, mostly, mom, mostly you, mom. Um, and now with grandma. But like, uh, see, the difference is in how I'm addressing it. It's a kind of indicative of the problem I'm about to get to, which is that I've uploaded so many of these videos to YouTube. And, like, a few of them have gotten a lot of views. Most of them have been the shorts, which is fine. Because it's like, if somebody watches 10 seconds of a cute puppy, I'm not reading into it. But, like, there are videos there I consistently have, like, 10 views or something on 15 minutes. 
of me walking through the woods, rambling, like staring at the backside of my two dogs. And I don't see how that's interesting to anyone. Really? I don't know how that's interesting <laughs> even in my family. Um, yeah, let alone to a stranger who doesn't know us. I mean, I wouldn't even ask my friends to watch most of these because nothing really happens. I mean, I think it's cool because it's cute, but like, they're my dogs, I love them. And it's my life, I'm living it. And I get to remember it. But if you don't know me, or even if you do know me, and you don't, you know, you don't want to see me just do nothing. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so in talking to mom, to you mom, about this, the suggestion was like, you could market these as like a naturescape, ASMR, like nature experience type of thing. And I'm familiar with those. I've watched those before. I love ASMR on YouTube. And I love, like, videos of, you know, walks of the woods. Or those long ones of just, like, a camera on a bird feeder. Or, like, a dog being cute. Or, like, the dog, kitten and puppy litter videos or the bird nest videos. Like, I know there's a thing for that. But, like, I don't know. So, I guess... Look at that brilliant gold on that tree. That's gorgeous. Oh, some of them are just like, some of them pop. I love it. I love it. I don't know if it's that particular tree or if it's the way the light is hitting the tree. But, uh, and I don't know if it's coming through on the cell phone camera, but that one really pops. Anyway, as I was saying, dash for painting, dash for marking. She loves to mark. As I was saying, so there's the tension. Is like, yeah, this could be like a nature scape, walk through dog woods, whatever kind of video. But then I'm like, Ugh, that makes it seem like I'm trying to make a YouTube channel. And I'm not really. I think it's interesting when a lot of people watch these videos, but it's not like a goal that I have. It's just kind of like funny when it happens, interesting when it happens. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, um, I don't want to make content. I don't want to generate content. So, you know, I keep doing what I'm doing. But there is the tension there. So, like, if this were nature ASMR or nature scape, relaxing dog walk through woods, through autumn woods, right? I probably wouldn't speak. I definitely wouldn't speak. I'd probably buy like a gimbal to hold the camera so it's steadier and I would not speak. Um, it would just be the crunching leaves, the crickets, since it's after six now, it's evening, dog noises, dogs running through the woods and just that. And um, a lot of my videos are that, so it's so hard to do. And like the point of this is I'm letting the dogs speak and the nature speak because that's the point but also <laughs> I feel like mom and grandma I feel like you guys like the videos better when I talk I don't know actually I'll, I'll just ask you I'll ask you in this video and then wait for you to watch the video to answer it to me in real life that'll be like a fun a fun game for me because maybe you guys aren't even watching these <laughs> And then it's like, this is all a moot point anyway. But if you are, my question is, do you prefer these videos when I speak or when it's just quiet nature? I assume you like it when I speak because I'm assuming that you would be watching it for me because you know me and you love me and you love the dogs. And you're like, what's Jasmine and her dogs getting up to today? You know? Um, versus myself thinking as a stranger, of a stranger, it would be like a, an immersive dog thing. Unless I'm like a very interesting personality, people love to hear me ramble about body positivity in uh, outdoor recreation or, I don't know, dogs, whatever I talk about. 
Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that. So, um, yeah. I guess I'm just curious. Ooh. Look at that split. Wow. Wow. Wow again. That must have made such a noise when it happened. I wonder if it happened slowly or if it cracked and fell all at once. Um, anyway. Yeah. So that's my question. That's my intention. Is speak or no speak? And I feel like people know me want to hear what, I, what I'm talking about. Um, they just want to hear me say something to give any sort of narrative direction to a video. Whereas if I were to market this as a YouTube video, I would market it as like a kind of immersive nature walk experience, which would mean I would not speak because that's not the point. And I, my speech, my rambling, unscripted rambling would ruin the vibe. Um, but I don't want to have a vibe at the expense of like the people I'm making the video for, which like first and foremost is, is you guys, you know? And when I say you guys, so it's clear, I don't mean an audience of YouTubers. I mean you, mom and grandma, I'm making the videos for you. I'm making the videos primarily for me. And then for you. Um, yeah. And like, not just you, mom and grandma. Like, grandpa, uncles, if you're watching this. Cousins, anybody. Anybody can watch it. Um, like... Clara, if you ever see this, I remember you said that my videos come up on your feed sometimes. I think that's crazy. Uh, because they all have ridiculous names. And none of it is, like, titled or branded in a way that makes it easy to search. Including my, my YouTube name. Um, but whatever. Oh, that's that. I did roll my ankle at the start of this. Uh, it's giving me a little trouble, but I'm okay. It's really nice out here. Sun setting. Sorry, Dasher. I'm coming. If I stop or I start lagging, she's like, what's up? You good? Yeah, Adkin doesn't even notice. We always the same way. She didn't let me get too far away from her. But I don't think that was her primary concern. In fact, I used to think Leo didn't care if I was around at all. And she would just as soon live in the woods and disappear. Um, I only found out that was untrue. Well, the story is I was going up, up this bluff. There were some switchback trails uh, in such a way that... She was down by a stream, and as I started going the switchback trails to the hill, she could no longer easily see me. Now at the time, I want to say she was eight, eight or nine-ish. Um, probably her hearing was starting to go, something that I would not learn until she was like 12 or 13. But maybe not. Sometimes sounds are weird. It's weird, odd to, hard to detect where a noise is coming from the woods sometimes. And there was a change in elevation. And I'm sure the stream was louder down there than me going up the hill on a switchback trail. But basically, I could see her down by the stream. Um, and I saw she realized I'd gotten away with from her. And she didn't know where I'd gone. And I saw her kind of frantically trotting back and forth looking for me. She ran way down the trail to where we'd, where we'd been before. And then came back up. She was just going back and forth looking. And then like, a couple people passed by. And Leo, I now realize with these two what a good dog she was. 
you know, never gave a damn about any other human being or dog ever. And so the people passed by and they're like, this dog is here. And she just ignored them. because She was like looking for me, looking for me in a way like she would run back down where we were, then come back there, run back down further, come back there. And I was just watching her. And you could tell she was like, you know, in a state of agitation. Um, cause she was like panting, looking around, moving very frantically and quickly, not hunting for fish like she was before, hunting or fishing like she was doing before. She noticed I was gone. And it was like, that was the first time. And it was before uh, Dasher was ever born. That was the first time I realized that she like cared about keeping tabs on where I was and us staying together in a hike, right? Because she very much was the sort of dog who when we would end a hike or when we leave a park or even when we would come back in from like the dog park would refuse to get in the car and run around and chase her and act like a, a brat about it, you know? So I was like, and she really loved being outside. And like, I didn't think she hated me, but I, I thought I knew what her priorities were until I saw that. And I was like, oh, wow, she's actually up like in a state that she has lost track of me. And then I called her, I called to her and she, uh, she heard it. She looked up. She's like, oh, there you are. And ran to me. And then we continued the hike from there. But like, that was an interesting, an interesting experience. And she wasn't a super... I don't know. I don't want to say she wasn't super attached. She was an aloof dog. <laughs> I peed the same time again. She was an aloof dog. She was a dog, though. So I guess she really did care a lot. Yeah. I think by the time she was middle-aged, she, um... You know. It was more about doing her own thing. But I guess... She always made it a priority to know where I was um, in ways that I didn't notice until I could observe her without her seeing me observe her. Uh, I'm trying to, there's a moon. The moon is right there. I'm trying to get it on camera. Uh, Let's see. Can you see the moon? It's really big and bright, but it might not be showing up in the phone camera. Jeez. This video is a lot longer than I intended for it to be, and it's getting dark a lot faster than I intended for it to. Can you see the moon now? It's that bright light be uh, behind the trees there. That's the moon. I don't think it's a full moon, but it's almost. That's the rest of everything, I guess. Yeah. What time is it? It's 6.41. So I am like, mm, 10 minutes from, from complete darkness. <sighs> yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind the shorter days in the fall were it not for like the kick in the pants you get when daylight saving time falls back in early November. Because right now, we've got daylight until like 6.30, 6.45, which is a far cry from the sun setting at like 8.45 in the summer. But it's happened gradually, and it's still mostly at the end of my work day kind of most like the majority of days that's the end of my work day well i'll say it this way most days my work day ends with enough time for me to take the dog for an evening walk before the sun sets before it's completely dark maybe it'll be dusk but it won't be nighttime but then after halloween suddenly it's like it jumps an hour like all of this change has been slow and gradual since the summer solstice and then all of a sudden it jumps back an hour and boom 
the sun is now setting at five something, right? And the sun setting at five something is just a, like a big shock. It's a dramatic change. And like, as a dog owner, it's not really one my work they can like come back from. So from early November on, I'm taking the dogs for their evening walk in the dark. Or like sometimes my work day is ending and it's dark. I mean, I don't need to tell this to people who like commute, live up north, have a job where they have to be somewhere. I'm, and I'm fairly lucky because, um, you know, I don't always have to be in a place for my job. I have some work from home flexibility. I have some uh, work from not an office flexibility. I have some flexibility in my hours so I can try to make sure I'm home before dark. But it does suck because mentally I feel like my day is shorter and it is. It is shorter. And I still have the same amount of things to do in a day. And I feel like I have less time to do it. My brain also, as the sun sets, kind of switches out of a productive mode into a, um, well, it's time to eat dinner and be at home and relax and not work mode. Um, you know, and things are usually wrapping up towards the end of the year. So it's like I have more to do with higher urgency and less time to do it. And I'm tired because it's dark and I'm cold. <laughs> uh, that's my usual thoughts about this time of year. It's a little stressful. So far it hasn't been because, you know, the days are shorter, but it's been gradual. It's not that much colder. I think I've gotten a very good schedule balance for this year, the way I've planned my, my schedule. Uh, it's been good. Yeah, but I just know that um, first week of November, it's just going to go from like, this is fine, to like, pit of hell. Um, anyway, we better get out of the woods. It's, I, <laughs> mom told me once in these videos, it actually looks brighter. It looks, well, she said it looks bright. The sky looks so bright and you're always saying it's dark. It's going to get dark, but it doesn't look dark in the video. So I don't know if you can see, but it's really dark and we need to get out of these woods because, um, I will be walking home in the dark, but... I don't want to be walking home in the dark through the woods because I will trip again and I might not get up. So this has uh, been a much longer video than I intended. Oh man, it is dark enough that I cannot really see the trail well, which is how I got lost in this part of the woods but, uh, you know, we, we all do our best. Um, I don't know that this is the trail. Oh boy, I hate when this happens. This is my fault for playing games in the dark. Okay, I think this, this way is the right. 